Death to good life is free, man. I, you keep saying that, but I don't know. Once we get this worked out, then we'll understand how to do it next time. The question was, great driving, Matt. No big deal. Uh, can you please go over the mods on the car, wheel spec, alignment, setup numbers, brake pads, etc.? I've got it down to one page you. now. You got it down to one page. Thanks. Yeah, no, yeah. America yeah. thanks you, Barry. I got, the, I got the Cliff Notes version of it. <laughs> You ready? What is, what are you drinking? Vodka, tea, hopefully. Tea. Oh. It's morning. So the question is, is what is the setup? What, what exactly did we do to the car, Barry? Let's, let's break that yeah. down. So, so let's start with, we were trying to get more rubber underneath the car. That was our number one goal. And so the car comes with, with 245s in the front and 295s on the rear. And we, so we went to Daniel and we said, well, how big of a tire can we With fit fin speed. Yeah. With fin speed. And he did some scans and he believed that we could stick a 265 on the front and we definitely can get a 305 in the rear. So to get a 265 in the front, he had to make a custom wheel for us that went out to nine inches from the factory's eight and a half inches. And he, and he guaranteed us that we would have no rubbing or anything with, with that wheel. And then, we, and then we went on the back, we stayed with an 11, because with an 11, we could go either a 295 or a 305, and it wouldn't pinch or anything. Um, and we would have clearance. So that was the wheel setup that we went with. And in order to get that to fit underneath the car, we had to put camera plates in the front and camera plates in the rear. Because it came, you, came with neither, whereas the GT3 does come with that. I don't believe the GT3 even comes with camber plates in the front. If you buy a motorsports version, oh. the club sport, it would have it. Okay. But with with the, all these GT cars, they don't have any camber plates. And, uh, did we buy it from the same company? Both those, the front and no. rear camber plates. No. So so we want we wanted our goal was when we add camber, the way the factory does it is they shim the bottom out, so that that front the top of the tire stays in place and the bottom just swings out. Yeah. If you do that, then you're going to whack the, the, the fender, right? And so what we were trying to do is we were trying to add camber by moving the top hats in, which would then move the, the top of the tire in, which would give it clearance up yeah. against the fender. And so in order to do that, we bought Terret front camber plates. And we found a company out in Switzerland called Emo Cars that built a rear camber plate. And we got those in like two days. Well, yeah, amazingly, the guy's in Switzerland, and he, it was expensive, but we were able to order these, and within a day, they were sitting on my porch. So that was impressive. We did 200 bucks. How, how much were those? Ship. Do we know how much those were? Th those were expensive. I think they were like the, the, like the front camber plates, I think the two of them were like 500, 600 bucks. The rear camber plates, the two of them were like 1,200 bucks. So they're twice as expensive as the front camber plates, but no one else makes them. Okay. And then you throw another 200 bucks on shipping and you're at 1400 bucks or something for these plates. Now, luckily we shipped two sets in one box. So we only paid 200 once for two sets, but yeah. So anyway, if someone's in the U S trying to get these, it's going to cost you 1400 bucks for these things. All right. So but it's the only way to get three fives in the back. Okay. So front and rear camber plates and yeah. having to do the wheels allowed us to get the setup that we wanted. One more piece. Oh, okay. so, in the front, we wanted to tow out about 0.7 millimeters, which would give us one and a half millimeters of tow out, and that gives you better turn and stuff. In the back, we wanted to tow it in, and we wanted to tow it in two millimeters per tire. And in order to do that, you had to get these these uh, tow link, tow control arms, uh -huh. which we tried to get from Terret, and Terret makes them, but they were out of stock. They had some supply problem. So we ended up going Probably. with our local SBL. And or actually, SPL, sorry. Yeah. And of those, which allowed us, after you get the camber beyond two, negative two, you can't maintain the tow. So we had to go to these, these tow links to get the negative or, or the two millimeters of rear tow with two and a half degrees of camber in the back. Right. Uh, and that was all accomplished for, it sounds like, Eighteen two thousand dollars in parts per car. Is that about how much that ended up? The, the fronts were around five hundred for the pair. The rears were around twelve or fourteen hundred. Uh, twelve hundred for the for the 
the camber plates in the rear. And then the toe links, I think they're about 1500, something like that. Seriously, Is that right? Barry? I don't know. That feels like a ripoff. Why, why did no, you do I that? That's a scam. I think they were 800. I think they were 800. I have to go back and look. Maybe mine were 1200 and yours were 100. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it was. They were, I think it was, they were I think $1,000 $1, a piece, but yeah, somehow mine ended up being 12 and yours were eight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So we did that from a setup standpoint. All in an accomplishment or in an effort to try to get the 305 bigger tires. Now, for the first run, the first session that I drove the car, I have not driven the car on 305s. You have. I drove yeah. it on the 295s, and I felt like that was it. I could feel it stepping out. That's when Cameron drove the car, etc. You have since gone to the 305s, and do you feel like that has solved the stepping out issue that you felt like you were having through the carousel section, some of the stadium sections, that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think there was two pieces to it. We we set the sway the the anti roll bars or sway bars were set to the factory settings medium medium when yes. we both drove it the first time. Yes, and the back end was stepping out. We, we were on these two ninety uh, fives on the back, and we had already moved to the two sixty fives in the front. Right, so we'd already stepped up the front. So we're and over we gripped in the front and it was yeah. stepping out in the back. Yeah. And, and, and then we had the sway bars medium, medium. So what you did while you were there on Sunday, maybe it was the next week. And I can't remember. You ended up moving the front to full stiff on the answer row bar. And that helped a lot. And that helped to plant the back. Right. And so I did that change. Plus I did the three Oh fives and it was very planted for me. And when it did break loose, it was maybe the back end would slightly break and then the front would break with it. Which is what I, I I like the front and rear to break evenly. Yes. I don't the back end wash out or the back or the front. I don't want to have the front end wash out or the back end step out on me. Hmm. And but I have the whole car slide in unison, and that's the where it's kind of at with me right now. It's it's more controllable. It's planted. Um, and then the other problem you had was we had rake in the car. We after the first weekend we lowered your rear which took some of the rake out. And then during the weekend, you lifted the front two turns, which I think took the rest of the rake out. And I think that helped you in the braking zones from all the swimming problems that you were having. Yes. Plus and, I, I, I break hard or then Barry, Barry likes, you like to kind of just ease onto the brake when you get in there and drive like a Sunday drive, just kind of <laughs> ease on. To and that's, that's one of the faults that I have, which, yeah. which comes a lot from the brakes that I had on my other cars, which because they're, would quickly, they're, they're, I would quickly fade. And with these, I found that I could hammer the brakes. So on my second weekend, I was able to hammer the brakes on turn 12 and on turn one. And I, I would, didn't, it didn't fade. Everything worked well. So right. I think that's that issue now. And we didn't make any aerodynamic changes whatsoever other than just put it into the track setup where you can kind of get the spoiler out a little bit more. And then we did full aero downforce in the back with the existing spoiler, but we have not made any aerodynamic changes whatsoever. To we didn't change anything from the factory parts, but we did go to full downforce on the front right. splitter, full downforce on the back wing. Correct. And then from a performance standpoint, so that settled the, that, that gets the car with the, in, close enough to the position that we like that we're feeling comfortable enough what and then from a performance standpoint we did obviously we talked about the tires which helps in performance and lap times the setup obviously helps in those things but we also switched the brakes and did something to the exhaust correct like using yeah. sole performance or sole let, let, before we jump into that let's let's give a summary of the camber negative three and a half in the front Okay. Negative two and a half in the rear. And then, like we said, a 0.7 for each tire, toe out on the front. Okay. And two meters of toe in in the back. And we have a spreadsheet that we can post in comments on that. Yeah. Okay. So that's I where figured, we ended up. I figured up you had a spreadsheet on that. Yeah. And that's where we've ended up, and we're happy with that so far. Okay. And yeah. And so that, that's a summary of where we ended up with that. And then we get into the performance side of things. We went with the sole link pipes. Because on the factory setup, you you have like a, I think it's a two inch. Let me go to all the measurements here. It was a two inch coming out of the header. And then it goes into two and a half inch link pipe that goes over the top of the rear axle. And then it goes into a particulate filter, which in Europe, it's it's populated with a particulate filter plus a cat. And we wanted to get rid of that. And then in the, in the U.S., 
North America. The particulate filter is not there, but we have a cat there. So we wanted to get rid of that cat. So the the soul or the excuse me, the um, soul link pipes allowed us to get rid of that cat and increase the diameter of that tube from a two point seven five inch to a three inch. Right. And that was the only change we made there. And that picks up thirty wheel horsepower. I heard, I've heard anywhere from twenty to thirty. Wheel yeah. or or. Yeah. Wheel. Okay. That's the only way they can measure it. Yeah. Um, okay. And you can feel that. I, I do feel like it sounds a little bit more throaty, especially in the low end. I am still of the opinion that I, I, I like like headers back exhaust, like just open that thing up but i know barry would never allow for such a such a human being to touch his precious porsche i don't think he would <laughs> I, I allow that want, I, I don't want to deal with check engine lights because of removing the cats and dealing with all that crap right now we still have the cat in the header and and, and it's all linked up with the oxygen sensors and everything so we're not going to have any check engine lights if you were to get a factory or if you were to get a warranty issue on the engine and they were to see that you pulled the cats they could blame it on that. And I don't want to deal with that. Right. You're not going to gain that more power in the back on, on the, the rear, um, exhaust, effectively the muffler in the back. That's the next thing I would change. And that's mainly to get rid of the weight. Cause that, that box is a big box. You could probably drop in there 15 pounds or something, but getting rid of that. And, and soul has a couple options there with just a cross pipe and a resonator, or it has the valve version, which even gets rid of the drone more. And so we've got to go figure that out on which one we want to take. That's, but that would increase the volume and get, get rid of some weight. Okay. And then that, that was really the only performance changes that we made as far as to the engine or that kind of stuff. And then lastly, but not leastly, I guess, or, or last but most important is, is safety. So we did the... Oh, brakes. Brakes. Oh, brakes. Okay. Yeah, I forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, brakes. Yes. So we, we wanted to definitely change the fluid to SRF. We did that. And changed the, the lines to a stainless steel braided line. We went to an emotion stainless steel line, and that, that helped with evening out the brake pressure and, and getting a, a better feel from the pedal. Um, and then we wanted to go to a pad that would be more aggressive on the track. Um, I like the RE10s, and I've had good luck with those. But we went with a Frodo, uh, what was it, a 312, uh, which is a real common pad. It, it, it has very little fade. Um, I was happy with them. It has the bite of the RE10, which I like. Uh, you were kind of complaining about that a little bit, but I think in the end, I think you liked them as well. Right. I did. I did. I, I'm not super picky when I get out there for some reason. I just, I don't really know how to fix it. I just know what it feels like. Yeah. Uh, and you've been, like we said before, you've been on better brakes than I have because right. of the cars that you've been driving. So you you can mash your pedal and go all the way into ABS on the cars that you were driving, and it, you would maintain the control of the car. Where the cars I was driving were ten year old cars, and the ABS systems were not that like they are now. Yeah, and so if I went into ABS, I would lose a lot of my braking. And so I could not go into ABS. I had to get to threshold and hold. And now with this car and on your GT3, I drove that as well. I could mash that thing all the way into the ABS and nothing really happened. Right. I wasn't even aware of ABS. It would just make adjustments. You felt yeah, like you yeah. just had great pedal feel. Yeah. You yeah. mash the pedal and let the, let the damn computer sort it out. Exactly. And, and that's the way this car works as well. So with these pads, I could just absolutely hammer it going into 12 at 150 meters out and it would it would do all kinds of crazy shit with it you know swimming around on all the bumps out there but it would sort it out right. and i could i could then trail break into the corner and accelerate out and i didn't pay but i could smell the heat as i came into 13 right but i didn't, I didn't pay for it going into 13 yeah. where in my other cars i would pay for it going to 13 correct i feel like the great the brakes do yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the setup and the braking power and ability of the GT4 RS is, is, I mean, I've driven the Senna, obviously, and I think that that, 
the, the speeds were greater. So the speeds were greater coming down the back straight in a center, right? You're going 175 miles an hour versus 155 miles an hour, whatever it ends up being. But the, the GT4 RS still feels just as much G-force braking or close to it. And we've actually looked at the data before where you're getting almost two Gs in the 4RS, but then in the center, so you were over two Gs. Over yeah. two Gs in yeah. the braking zone coming into 12 um, at yeah. the end of the back straight. But in the center, yeah. you were hauling balls. Yeah, uh, I wish I still, I, I, I didn't have my camera in the car when I went for a ride with you in the Asana, but I distinctly remember when you were braking at over two Gs, the the straps, the hardest straps that were dangling down would go completely horizontal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they'd be sitting out in front of me just horizontal in the air. And then as you as you trail break, they they come back down on my chest. Yeah, it's so pretty awesome. I never saw I never saw that before. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's amazing how much brake force that car had. All right, and then safety. So safety. I know you love safety. Yeah. You're big into yeah. that. Uh, yeah. So we, I went from a I went from a caged car with a full fire suppression. You went from a caged car with a full fire suppression, and now we went to a car with street car again. Right. Which I was nervous about, and there's there's a lot of velocity in this car. So if you make a mistake, it's going to be bad. I mean, right? so they say. So you try to mitigate this as much as you can. So we, we ended up putting a, a BBI harness bar with a roll bar on top. And we chose so that based off of aesthetic that it allowed us to be able to see the GT4 RS on the engine cover and see a little bit more of the engine. Plus I like the symmetry of it versus some of the other options that kind of look like a three point hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it was the first one that I saw evidence through Alex's shop that it, it cleared the carbon intakes. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I saw pictures of it. I knew it was going to clear. And so we bought that through Alex's shop, through, and he picked it up through BBI. Um, so that ended up giving us the, the roll bar on top and the hardest bar so we could put a six-point in it. I won't drive without a six-point. You, I know you've driven cars with just seat belts in it, a three-point yeah. I would never do that. Yeah, I mean, I. With yeah. The, the kind of speed that we're getting in these cars, no way would I, I do mean, that. That's only if you hit the wall and you're doing that. If you, if everything else is fine, all is fine. Yeah, all is fine. <laughs> yeah. There's there's two pieces to it. There's that piece, and then there's the what it feels like piece. Right. In the braking zones with a three point, you're like bracing yourself with your feet on the dead pedal and all this and. I don't. I want to be able to hang in the harness and feel the car swimming, and you can only do that with a six. Do you ride roller coasters? I, I, as a kid, I don't have okay. rode them recently. When I ride roller coasters, you know how you can pull down the thing and you can and it clicks, click, 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 all the way down to your chest. I just pull yeah. it to the first click, click. You want to? You want? I want. I want to float around in that thing, like <laughs> <laughs> like you're going upside down. You drop. You know, like oh, I got one click. Hold me in, like I like yeah, that. Screw that, man! I want to be planted. <laughs> no, I want to feel. Yes. If if you don't feel like you're gonna die a little bit or poop your pants, like I don't, I don't really want to do it. <laughs> I want to. Not a good ride. No, huh? it's not a good ride. Okay, so we did the roll uh, six point harness. Anything? So we did the Schroeds endurance six point, and the endurance was a key thing because you can adjust those real easily. We're not going to be doing driver swaps, right? But it's really easy to adjust these and get into it and quickly get easily into it. the best, easily the best uh, harness I've used. I, I like the adjustability of it. I like the functionality of it. It's very compliant. I've had people get in the car and ride with me and they can figure it out, which is always nice because you know how it is. You're getting ready for a session and you you got your routine and then lo and behold, you got to try to get your guy strapped in or girl strapped yeah. in next to you or whatever. So. Uh, I'm very happy with that. I, I don't think I would make any changes beyond what we've already kind of talked about with, with some setup and stuff. Is there anything else after, I mean, you've done a whole other weekend. Was there anything else that you're like, okay, this is what the car kind of needs next. Uh, aside from a sound system. <laughs> I already have a sound system. It's the engine going to 9,000. I don't need any, <laughs> I don't need anything. Touche. 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 Um, well, we should talk. We, we did put the, the, the cover over the top of the screen that we then mount the Garmin on. That worked well. That was really nice. But 
But on this last session, I was doing I'll go on that. It was Ooh, 104. Wow. It was 104 outside, very humid. So things were were expanding and stuff. As I was going down the back street, the thing fell out. Yeah. <laughs> and then the whole so the whole garment and the mount plate slipped out. It's laying in your lap now. Yes, yeah, so, and I was thinking, well, I could probably just leave it there, but then I thought, well, if it falls on my side, it could get underneath the pedals. Yeah. I don't want it to happen. So I, going down the back straight, I had to, like, grab it and start trying to push it back in. Yeah. And the first time I was able to get it back in, and then I figured out I would, I would reseat it and get everything straight when I, I forgot. And so I go out a second time or third time, and it fell out again. Oh. And this time, one side of that mount bracket popped completely out. So I couldn't grab it and just push it back in. So I had to fiddle with it as I was going down the back straight, trying to get it mounted back in. <clears throat> and I eventually got it back in, and, and I need to think about that one again. I think it's because of the heat. Because when it was cold, it didn't come out. And I think it heated up and expanded, mm. and then... It's loose. It out. Under, under you know vibrations and stuff, and it, it kind of worked its way out and fell out. It so does I work. I, uh, surprisingly, it works surprisingly well for the simple approach that it has but yeah. I, you're right i mean we, we we probably need to find more of a permanent solution to that got the or case. modified in such a way that even when it's hot it doesn't come out i i don't know I, I don't know if it worked its way out over a couple sessions and i just didn't catch it and push it back in or if it came out all in one session so yeah anyway we need to we need to think about that and you can see that that mount in the video we'll put a, a description to yeah yeah because I found it through a couple forums and people had good luck with it. Um, okay. But we need to figure that out. I'm happy with it, the placement of it, but we just need to figure out how to keep it in there. Uh, well, that I think that answers one question. We have a lot more to talk about. But after the fact that it took us an hour to get this going today, I think <laughs> we cap it there. 